behind designing a safer seatbelt. Right now, there are more than 36 million drivers over the age of 65, and because of outdated designs, many are at a higher risk of being injured by equipment intended to keep them safe. Well into her 70s, Helen Kessler still feels confident on the road, but she's not always comfortable behind the wheel because of her seatbelt. I just put it across me and it usually goes across here, but by the time I get done driving, it's up closer here and I just pull it down each time. Decades ago, seatbelts were designed to protect the average driver, then a 40-year-old man. Now, drivers are far more diverse and seatbelts can be less effective. It's not enough to keep someone my size maybe back in my seat, and it's probably too much force to keep an elderly occupant in their seat, which could cause thoracic um, injuries. To better protect a wider range of drivers, Ohio State researchers are working with automakers to rethink safety systems, starting with smaller models that more closely represent more fragile, older drivers. We're doing some studies to look at how strong are their ribs, how, how do they interact with the seat belt, potentially with airbags in, in a side impact uh, scenario. Even minor accidents often cause injuries along the seatbelt line, in the collarbone, ribs, and pelvis. In younger drivers, that's rarely serious. But someone that's older, um, a couple rib fractures, flail chest, problems breathing, pneumonia, it can really build up and cause a lot more issues. Now, experts say this research could lead to key fobs that know a driver's age, height, and weight and can adjust a car's seatbelts accordingly. Now, that's still a few years away, but it is critical since by 2030, there will be more than 60 million licensed drivers over the age of 65. And then giving somebody else your key fob then would change the calculation. I know, that's why I was not exactly yeah, sure wow. how that would work, but... Mm -hmm.